Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum ache hey. Kai say hey up. And today we're to Sadhguru on the Citizen mm-hmm. Amendment Act and um, on the CAC on the protest. So uh, a couple days ago I did a video on some of the violent protests that have been happening and um, the people that are against it but are not walking the streets protesting mm-hmm. nicely. They're walking with baseball sized rocks and throwing at the police, throwing it at buildings, destroying um, railway stations, burning things down. So just horrible, horrible. And talking jihad, like this is the kind of stuff that needs to stop. You're against it, okay, peaceful protest is one thing. We here at the Jan family are for this bill. We feel like India, in order to become the next great country, and it's coming up there, it's in six in the economy, it's going to keep growing and growing, and it, Modi has been doing so many great things. This is one of those things, like, you need to have illegals accountable for. These illegals are being prosecuted in the neighboring countries that used to be part of India. And so they need a safe haven to come and call home so that they're not being prosecuted. And they also need to be accounted for so the country knows who's in there, who's eating, who's Who's paying paying taxes. taxes. Yeah. Who's a criminal, who's not a criminal. Like, even when you sign up for Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you have to write your name, your birth date, your address, your phone number. And, you know, you get stopped by the police here. They, they ask you for identification. They pull up everything. You know, they know who you're married to, who, who your car belongs to, where, you're, where you live. Like, but they should know that. And, you know, we see these poor police officers with these sticks and, you know, a shield from the rocks. Like, they need, they're the ones out there putting their lives on the line. I just heard from my husband that some of them were, got bullet wounds from these protesters They need not a Raphael behind them. They need a gun in their pocket so they can defend themselves and the people so that nobody gets hurt from this. People shouldn't be violently protesting, one, but for two, the police need to be able to put full force behind and stop it so nobody gets hurt and the damages don't get done like they have been. So we're going to watch Sadhguru. He has quite some knowledge and I enjoy listening to him, so... Mm -hmm. I'm going to see what he has to say about the Amendment Act. The vehemence with which people are fighting, I'm, I was wondering, did I miss something? I think in a very calibrated way, somebody sent the message to the minorities that your citizenship is under threat. This lie did fly for the last one week, now it's landed. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Sadhguru, there is a lot of turmoil in the nation regarding CAA and NRC. I am confused and many of us do not even know what to make out of it. Where did you come from? I am from Lucknow. Oh. (laughs) And there is so much going on. Yeah, I know, Lucknow people are confused. (laughs) (laughs) Sadhguru, I wanted to know your thoughts on this. My thoughts, CAB became CAA, a bill became an act. Well, looking at uh, last one week's uh, reactions on the street, I even wondered, have I missed something really? Have I missed some aspect of it? Because I have not read the act fully, I only know it from the newspapers and whatever else is there in the… generally out there. Mm, Considering that many explanations that are being put out. See, this was one land, got divided about seventy-two years ago. Terrible things happened. Mm Nearly six hundred, seven hundred thousand people got killed. Three to four million people migrated from both sides, going through enormous suffering. And the country, at least one part, not India, the other two parts that happened, 
happened on religious basis. People divided the land on religious basis. Fortunately, we chose to be a secular yes. nation. But the others chose Which to be, India great. you know, yep. religious republics. But not everybody changed sides because people have been living there for millennia. Not everybody will leave their property, their life, their everything and travel just because the nation, somebody drew a line. Seventy-two years ago, a whole mm. lot of people did not understand what this line meant, really. So quite substantial number of them stayed back. There's a lot of debate about percentages, I'm not an expert on this either. They say twenty-three percent stayed back in West Pakistan and nearly thirty percent stayed back in East Pakistan. That's what people say because nobody has perfect numbers, I believe, but it's somewhere around that, it can't be totally wrong. But then uh, 1971 war happened and East Pakistan became Bangladesh. Then widespread persecution of the minorities happened. At that time, nearly eighteen to nineteen percent of the people left and came back to the Indian side. They gotten mixed up, there was no proper arrangement, they just gotten mixed up with the local population. Some of them are still in refugee camps, unfortunately, it's the situation in India. The situation on the other side is different because by law there is discrimination against the minorities. Here also people will claim there is discrimination, mm. but not by law. Individual people may Not always well. discriminate against yeah. each other, which is there in yeah. every nation on some basis for race, religion, caste, creed, gender, mm -hmm. all kinds of discriminations exist Doesn't unfortunately matter. in most societies on the planet. We are not completely antiseptic to that, we also have our share of discriminatory practices, but not by law. In the eyes of the law, all citizens of India are just same. There is no two ways about it. Yeah. Social practices, not everything catches up with the constitution, everybody plays their own little game here and there for different reasons, political reasons, social reasons, economic reasons, you know, variety of things. But on the other side, by law, there are discriminations, which… Uh, That's crazy. By yeah. law, women are seriously discriminated on various levels. By law, almost all the minorities are discriminated. Just day before yesterday, a professor has been given a death sentence for blasphemy because he wrote something online which the religion does not like. Such things are not possible in this country, okay? Socially, there may be repercussions that is there everywhere in the world, but not by law. I was in Baku in Azerbaijan. 164 Pakistani Hindus were visiting Baku because Baku has a fire temple which is over five to six thousand years old with all Sanskrit inscriptions, Indian people have been traveling to this fire temple. It is… it is called the Agni Kashi. So those who want to do sadhana on fire because of natural gas, naturally on the land, there are points where fire is burning or he's been burning forever. So they built a nice temple around that and this is a place where people go to do sadhana, largely to die, the last part of their life. They want to go there and spend for thousands of years, they've been going there. So now, in India, we've completely forgotten about the Baku temple, the fire temple, but the Pakistani Hindus are still going there. So 164 of them came. Well, on that day, I had to take 164 photographs with each one of them. 
and then families and then friends and groups and mm -hmm. totally two hundred pictures in one evening. Then one of them, mm -hmm. a young man maybe around thirty, maybe thirty-two, thirty-three years of age came to me crying bitterly and uh, he said, he was married for two and a half years. One day, ten, twelve people came, thrashed him, picked up his wife and went away. And that evening, they got her married to another man oh of God. another religion. It's crazy. And that evening, she's with him. Terrible. Two and a half years, he was married to her, they're close together. Now, forcefully they take her and he cannot, police won't take complaint, he cannot go to court because Hindu marriage is not legal in Pakistan. Can you beat it? What? That's I was crazy. I surprised that there is such a law. Oh my God. I have not made a study of it. I must check this out. Somebody must check this out properly. Like why? But I inquired and a few other people confirmed it is so. I'm not hundred percent on this, but this man's plight is real. That they pick up his wife, take her away, that evening they get her married to somebody else and she's supposed to live with him that evening. Because his marriage is not valid, because he's gone through a Hindu ritual. He has not gone through the rituals that the other religions are propagating. So his marriage is not valid. So people have been going through these kind of things, so a trickle of people, slowly when they get overly frustrated, they can't live there, they've been coming for last few decades. In my opinion, CAA is too little compassion coming too late. Because the Something atrocities that they have gone time through, time there are statistics yet. saying they had this many hundred temples, now there are only this many because systematically it has all been demolished so that there is no places of prayer or worship for other religions, this is happening. For all religions, not for any one specific religion because the fundamental belief is that the nation belongs to one religion. That is not the case with India fortunately. Here, everybody can practice whatever, propagate yeah. whatever, everything is yes. there. Secular nation. So CAA is not bringing any new people. See, we are populated, all right, even here. We are well populated. So we don't need millions mm -hmm. of people coming from another country, no matter what is the situation there. We can't go on taking people. So some cutoff date was fixed as per the Assam Accord, 1972 or 71 was something was fixed because that is the time when huge influx happened. A genocide which killed three million people, three million Hindus were killed just before Bangladesh got liberated. So at that time a massive influx of people happened. So local people started protesting because their culture is being overrun by refugees. The refugee population is bigger than the local population in Assam, so they have always been protesting. You know the whole Assam movement in seventies. So there they made an accord that we will identify all the foreigners and send them back or do something, redistribute them, whatever. That never happened because people who made that accord, they only signed the paper, they did not act. So now the cutoff date is 2014. Those who have come before that, that means they have been living in this country for ten, twenty years without a driving license, without a passport, without a ration card, without an other card, without any kind of identity, like animals. There is no human identity in this country mm. because of this controversy, should we accept them or not accept them? Now you make up your mind and say, till 2014, whoever has come, we will accept them. But looking at the reaction in the country, it amazes me, are we… are we this hard-hearted that 
somehow for whatever reasons. But this bill is only focused on religious persecution. You may have some other trouble and you want to come here, that's not allowed. You may be looking for economic opportunities, you cannot come. If you want to come, there is a separate channel for that. Anybody can apply for Indian citizenship and go through the normal process exactly. of law. Exactly, yeah. Like in any other nation, even in India, you can apply for Indian citizenship, go through the normal process, irrespective of your religion, you can come into India. This is a right. block acceptance of citizenship. This is for those people who have been living here, nineteen… I mean, twenty-fourteen means they've been here for at least over seven years, most of them over fifteen, twenty years. Well, uh, <laughs> looking at the reaction on the street, the vehemence with which people are fighting, I'm… I was wondering, did I miss something? Am I not getting something here? But uh, since… In the last twenty-four hours, I looked up a few things. This is all it is, and everybody knows that's all it is. Mm -hmm. Now slowly everybody is then is changing their stance and saying, no, no, we are reacting because of police atrocity. Nobody… See, one thing is it looks like the government was caught napping because they didn't expect such a big reaction for such a simple issue. So they didn't put up enough police on the streets so police got really thrashed badly in most places, brutally. Yeah, and with their sticks. So yeah. when a few thousand people corner twenty-five policemen and thrash them, naturally when the bigger force comes, they are going to do some things. I'm not trying to justify anything. This is the reality that we have seen in the last eight days. And now everybody is changing their stance and saying, no, no, it's not that we never said it's religious discrimination, it is just pro police should not enter the university. But university students can behave like uh, what query workers and from inside the university they're throwing stones yeah, at everybody. Okay. No. Yes, they should. And police should yeah. not go and stop them when they go. Well, if she's throwing stones and she is not, both will get beaten, unfortunately, because she's standing sitting next to her. This is the way it works in mm -hmm. the crowd, huh? Will they go out and point out only she was throwing, others were not throwing? It doesn't work like that. All of them who are sitting together, everybody gets beaten. But I think they didn't use their firepower that is a lot of restraint, otherwise people would have died in big numbers. Look now where you come from, there are fifty-six policemen who have bullet injuries. Yeah. I mean, it's where do the bullets okay. come from? Lucknowi people. Yeah. What they are you up to? Terrorists. Police have bullet have injuries. <gasps> what does it say, unfortunately? So this is a dangerous game people are playing. I think there is a certain desperation among certain people who misinformed illiterate masses of s religious groups who went wild thinking that the local Indian no, Muslims will lose not. their citizenship. Against That's what they conveyed. Indian Muslims, it's not. They sent out a message saying it's against they are terrorists. discriminating and all of you will lose your citizenship and they will throw you out. This is. Uh, well, such a mischief should not have worked on the scale that it worked. It should not have. It's unfortunate. Still, in today's day and age where you can just open up your phone and read the act, what does it say? What does the CAA say? Any student can read it, but all of them are coming and yeah. behaving like illiterate people. They're studying in premier mm -hmm. universities and how come they can't read the damn act? It's really sad that such a thing can happen, that nobody reads the act, everybody goes What's by the that? rumors that are going on. <laughs> That's not WhatsApp is their source of knowledge, mm. okay? I hope they're not doing any PhD on WhatsApp. <laughs> it's really terrible yeah. that public property is burned and destroyed. Ordinary people's Railway scooters stations. and cars and shops yeah, being yeah, absolutely vandalized like this, for what? 
Uh, because once the crowds go into a frenzy state, nobody knows why they're doing what they're doing, everybody's doing something. I think in a very calibrated way, somebody sent the message to the minorities that your citizenship is under threat, which is an absolute lie. Unfortunately, it did fly. This lie did fly for the last one week, now it's landed, now people know it's mm, not. So they're trying to find excuses. different reasons why we did what we did. It's very unfortunate. You also want NRC? You… Sh you determined to get me into trouble. See, there is an NRC in every nation. It may not be done in this format. Mm -hmm. What That's NRC it means is, every, is country, every citizen yeah, must be registered. Illegal. All those who are living in this country must be registered. When mm -hmm. we are trying to… Our dogs have in Coimbatore City, license. there was an attempt to register all the dogs which have some mm -hmm. ownership. Right. I'm saying the idea is we must know how many dogs, otherwise we don't know what will happen. Because some children were killed by packs of dogs, you know, loose dogs, street dogs out there attacking school children and eating them up, mm -hmm. killed. Yeah. So then somebody suggested all those who have some ownership, they must have a tag and they must be registered, their birth and death must be registered. When we are thinking on these lines, we want even dogs to be registered. Is it not important how many human beings are there in this country? Where did they come from? Were they born here? Did they come from outside? What is their antecedents? Is it not important for a nation to know this if you want to conduct this nation properly? But some people think that is also religion. discriminatory. Yeah. Class. This is for everybody. All of us, you and me, will have to register. Now, they are giving you various options. You produce your birth certificate. People say, we don't have. You show the school fr footprint. No, I, were, I never went to school. You show the ration card. No, I don't <laughs> have it. Show the other card. I don't have it. Do you exist? Show the election registration card. I don't have it. Then who the hell are you? And if you don't have any of these things, they are saying produce three yeah. <laughs> witnesses who How know you, you along this far for a period of time. No, I don't have witnesses <laughs> Who are you <laughs> It is just probably, I think in some way, for whatever reasons, I think the government has failed to communicate this properly, otherwise, Personally, I don't see one issue on these things. But I think communication-wise, the way it is communicated, unfortunately, certain number of people are perceiving it as a threat to them. That must definitely change. If mm. anybody is issuing a threat yep. through mm. these two most essential, one is of some compassion coming very late in my opinion, yeah. it should and have happened much before. if you're already registered, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. Another is an absolute necessity for a nation to register every citizen who lives in this country. See, there are so many foreigners here, we don't know who they are mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, we should know where they come from and why they have come, isn't it? In any nation, that's a fact. So, such a simple thing, I think, mm. was lack of proper communication and people took advantage of it and made sure <laughs> it was miscommunicated. Which is sad because they're the ones studying. Illiterate youth in the universities went wild <laughs> Yeah, Sadhguru has it right. I do yeah. think somebody somewhere took it the wrong way mm. and it just spread like wildfire yeah. and now you know he's saying people are trying to be like oh we weren't fighting for that we were fighting for something else like making a different excuse for the reason for all the rioting like what else would happened. you be fighting for yeah but if you were here it's not if you already have citizenship of india you have nothing to worry about no these are people that were prosecuted in neighboring countries that came here 
when there was a big influx of them coming mm-hmm. because they didn't want to die or be prosecuted or killed or converted in these other countries, came here and been living on in India for the last five, seven, he said, what, seven, ten, twenty years, some of yeah. them. And so trying to make them accountable. They know they came in when they needed and they should have been done a long time ago. And so now they're doing it. So if you already are a citizen of India, it's not against you. No, it's not. And it's not opening the doors for everybody under the sun to come in. If you have papers and you are already an Indian citizen, there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing to worry about, no. If you can prove a driver's license, a voter registration card, you know, one of the many things, and even that, Sadhguru said, even if you have three people that can vouch for you, that know you lived in that neighborhood for the last five years, that's been your neighbor, that snowed your wife, bring them and they can be your your voucher for you. But if you don't have any of that, then who, who are, you? are you and why are you here? So in order to run a good country, you need to know who's in your country. Yeah. For crime reasons, for economic reasons, you need people to be accountable for tax reasons. You know, you open up a Facebook account, they need to know your address, your phone number, your name. They won't let you, you know, make anything up. Anything you do nowadays, you have to have some accountability for. Yeah. They need to know who you are. And it's not, you know, to be nosy. It's because they need to know for security reasons, for tax reasons. There's a lot of reasons behind it. India, you're the next big country. You're yeah. like number five or number six right now economically. You're going to be number three very soon. You're going to be up there. And you have to have some accountability for that. Mm-hmm. But good leadership also needs to come behind this because people didn't understand this bill. And so I think that's kind of what started the rioting. Yeah. You know, you, they didn't understand the basis behind it. They thought it was reli- against their religion. They thought it was not. against, you know, their, their own citizenship. And it's not. It's to already get the people that have been there accountable for and it has nothing to do with if you're already a citizen and it's not against anybody else so it's not letting anybody else in it's not opening the doors up but it's saying the people that have already been there for 7 10 15 years can stay but everybody else needs to come in the the way they should you know apply and and come in the right way this is, should have been done a while ago, like Sadhguru said. The people that have And so this is for their own good. And to make them accountable for being in India for as long as they have, to have them say, like, this is my job, this is where I live, this is where I work, this is my family, so that they know who they are and yeah. who's in the country. Big country. Every, we all do it everywhere. So yep. the big leaders need to help Modi and stand behind this and also let your community know what is really this bill about so that you're not having all these riots, you know, throwing rock throwing and stuff. You know, Wasi is, you need to let your community know and be a great leader, you yeah. know, APJ Klom. Like, these are the times that you need to stand up and say, this is not against religion. This is, this is for the country. You need to mm-hmm. stand behind your country, keep the religion at home. This is not about religion beautiful secular country yeah Yeah. another thing is that police officers shouldn't just have sticks or shields they should have something bigger like guns they shouldn't just have sticks because that's not going to really protect them from anything no yeah like these terrorists that come in have big guns Mm -hmm. ak-47s yeah big big guns and you know you go up to the them and with a stick and a shield you're pretty much a dead meat yeah. You know, and, you know, we did hear, and this is the first time I heard that some of the police officers were shot. So, and I know guns are not like a norm in India, like they are here in the U.S. So we know somebody who got them would, I would consider them terrorists because they're like black market guns. They're not, yeah. you know, everyday kind of guns. But the police should have guns. Like they shouldn't be running away from baseball sized rocks with a stick and a, and a shield. Like they need to kind of stop and not... I don't want force, but sometimes you need to show the big guns before people realize you're serious. Yeah. And 
the people that are writing, you should know what you're writing for. <laughs> like, read the bill, find the information out, don't listen to all the crap, you know. You don't can't, listen it's to like gossiping. telephone, yeah, don't listen to the gossip. Find out for yourself, because you're going out in the streets, once people start, like Sagaru said, once you start doing it, you get kind of caught up in the fire of it, mm -hmm. and you then you don't even remember what started you in the first place to go out there and throw the yeah. stones. So don't get yourself in trouble if you don't have to be. And if you need to fight for something, do it in a peaceful manner. Yeah. You know, but this is a bill that needs the country's support. Mm -hmm. This is about India. This is not about religion. This is about your country. Put your country first. Yes. Don't ask your country what handouts they can give you. Ask what you can do for your country. That is how it should be. So mm -hmm. I hope you guys enjoyed this Sagaru video. And don't forget to subscribe. And join our wonderful Jan family. Mm -hmm.